it's kind of funny that we have a problem with social distancing because we've been doing this for a very long time. We've been trying to get away from people, right? I mean, we try to get away from our neighbors. We try to get away from that person in line in front of us. Um, how many of you know people who, when they talk to you, they come up right on you like that? <laughs> Y'all know people like that? That's horrible. It's horrible. It's, I'm just going to shout that out from now on. When somebody does that to you, I'll be like, social distancing, bro. You got to get away from me. You know, I might be, you know, might be COVID. And so some of those people, they, they come up real close. And then you, I find myself standing back kind of like this with my leg in front. You ever do that? You're trying to create some space or you try to put an object between you. I've done that too. So someone will be talking to you and be like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. And you kind of lean over and start talking to them. It's <laughs> just to create some room, you know. But now we just want to be all close together. And I just love that. For, for a while, and then we'll want to be far apart again, you know. We have social media, which is kind of a, a way of social distancing, you know, kind of being in other people's business without being in their face. You know, we like that, you know. As long as we know what's going on, we don't have to be near them. We just want to be in the know. But it's good to be back. It's good to be here. It's good to see people come into this place to worship our Lord. And I'm thankful for that. You know, when we talk social distancing, we don't want to be socially distanced from God. The Bible says to draw nigh unto him, and he will draw nigh unto you. We want to get close to God. And that's why we're here today, right? Now, we can get close to God in our homes. We can get close to God in our vehicles. We can get close to God anywhere. Because wherever you go, there he is, because he lives in you. Right? But this is a place where we can come together in, in a larger group, And we can all get together, get closer to God with one another. It's a wonderful thing. Well, I'm going to kind of make our way back to our growth series, Growth 2020. I don't know how many of you have forgotten our theme this year. Uh, Amidst all that has happened, we still have this theme of growing this year, right? When the the pandemic sets in and the very... The very last thing we want to do or the very last thing we're thinking about is growing. We're just thinking about surviving, right? We think about our, our jobs may be at risk or, our, uh, you know, maybe somebody we know their job might be at risk. Our health is at risk. So we, 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 we're more into the, the preservation than it is the growth aspect, right? I knew a guy who, uh, who managed uh, $500 million in assets for Morgan Stanley. And uh, he had only had about 100 clients. And I said to him, I said, wow, man, it must, must be hard just thinking about people's income, just trying to get it to grow. He said, that's not so. He says, when you get to be that wealthy, it's not about the accumulation of funds. It's the protection of funds. It, it's, not about, it's not about increasing what you have. It's about protecting what it is you have. And so now we are in this midst of this pandemic. And, uh, and so oftentimes we think about, well, let's just preserve what we have. Let's protect as opposed to let's go out and conquer, right? And so our, our theme this year is Growth 2020. We actually want to continue to increase while maybe others are decreasing. We want to, we want to expand while other people are contracting, right? We want to continue to move forward, not be in the same place or move backward, God forbid. But we want to move forward. And so our theme this year is Growth 2020. We do not want to forget that. I want to ask you kind of a rhetorical question this morning. How have you guys been doing? We're five months into this. Five months into this, this year, we've made some some goals. Maybe we've set some goals. We've talked about how we're going to increase, how we're going to grow. Where are you guys at? Let me just ask you, where are you guys at with your health? How many of you guys have been in the gym the last five months? Give me hands up. Can't be in the gym. Gym's closed. Ha ha. I got you. No, I'm just kidding. How many have been in the gym trying to go to the gym? Okay. How many else are, how many else are growing with, with their health? How many, else, how many have lost weight this year? Anybody? Anybody? How many of you have increased? Keep your hand up. No. <laughs> I've increased my weight. No, I'm just kidding. It's only muscle, though. They say muscle weighs more than fat. That's why I'm, I'm gaining, gaining weight. Uh, how about education? Anybody increasing their education this year so far? Okay, got one. He is. Okay, so Dana and I, we just enrolled in in a master's program. Uh, This is my second master's, right? Like, I need another one. (laughs) Soon you'll be calling me master. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's bad enough you have to call me pastor. So, but, but Dana, I will have to call her master. Yeah, 
That will be interesting. So, so uh, we're growing educationally. How about, uh, how about in our finances? Now, whoa, whoa, that's a tough one, right? Because everybody's trying to preserve the little finances they have. So the question is, how many of you are increasing your savings this year? Just give me hands. Any, anybody? Anybody? Okay, good, good savings. Good savings. All right, good. That's good, right? We're trying to save more. Uh, how about uh, business? Is your business growing? Anybody have a business where your business is growing? I, I, know, I know John. He's like, yeah, bro. He does uh, insurance adjusting. So he's been on roofs looking at, uh, looking at hail and all sorts of things. So uh, I know his business is growing. Anybody else business growing this year? Ben and Josh? That's true. I can't deny that. They're mowing more lawns than there are lawns to mow. We just keep going back. Actually, we're going to offer free fertilizer treatments. That's a joke, because then we go back and mow the lawn. <laughs> Pays for itself. Anyway, that's a joke. So, okay, what else? What else? So, anybody else growing any this year? Do you feel like you're moving forward? Just raise your hand if you kind of feel like you're moving forward. Let me get just a survey here. Okay. How many of you feel like, just be honest, be honest. How many of you feel like you're not really moving forward? You're kind of stagnant. Just raise your hand. Anybody? Okay, kind of stagnant, kind of stagnant, kind of stagnant. How many of you feel like you're going backwards? Just give me, just be honest, be honest. I'm not going to call you out. Feel like you're going backwards a little bit? Okay, so maybe a couple of us feel like we're going backwards. Several of us feel like we're maybe stagnant. Then there are several people maybe moving forward, right? So growth, 2020. It's neat. When we look at what we're doing in the church, this doesn't seem like growth, but this is actually growth. You know, we're all back together again. In in a sense, (laughs) we're, we're, we're together in a sense, right? We've got our new book out. I wanted just to let you know that. So this is, uh, I, think, I think this is our, our, our best book so far. I really think that, that this is, it's getting, it's getting so much better. This is The Better Life. It's on Psalm 1. It's a commentary, basically. I preached through uh, these uh, six or seven messages maybe last year. And so that's cool. So we're growing. This is a new one. We're, we're actually having our Simple Habits book. We're having that... Uh, but rewritten by a, kind of a, a, a much better editor. We're outsourcing it, and hopefully we'll get that published by someone who's not us. So we're increasing. We're actually in the middle of another book called Prayer, Connecting with God, so where there's increase there. We're adding new students to the Learning Center, so there's, it's an increase, right? There's a- adding students. So here's what I want to say. Don't let the pandemic keep you from growing. Let us keep moving forward. Let us press toward the mark, right? We want to keep growing spiritually. We want to keep growing physically. We want to keep growing mentally and financially and educationally. We want to keep growing, move forward toward the mark. This is the growth year, and I don't want to be set backwards. Two things I want to talk about this morning real quickly. The title of the series that I'm in is Growing with the Giants, simply Growing with the Giants. We're examining a bunch of people. In the, in the New Old Testament, started in the Old Testament. And we're going to be modeling our lives after some of the positive things that we see in these people's lives. And then, of course, the things that we find that are negative, that will not help us grow, we're going to reject those things, right? We're going to learn from that. I've heard someone say that if God can't use you for a good example, he'll use you for a bad one. So we have to look at these examples of misconduct, of bad behavior, and say, we'll reject those and we'll increase with these ones. Okay, so we're going to do that this year. So growing with the giants, but I simply titled this following the giants. So I want to talk real quickly about a couple things we need to follow. First of all, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to give you a very, very well-known verse, a couple of very well-known verses. One is in 1 Corinthians 15, and the other one is in 2 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Corinthians 15. First of all, let me say this, that, there is, that following, following is an internal desire. Following is an internal desire, point one. Uh, what you may not realize is that there is some sort of internal desire to follow, okay? We see this from the beginning of time. We, we may not be following the right example, but there is kind of a tendency, an internal desire to follow, and we need to be careful of the people we follow because we will become like the majority of people we are surrounded by. We will adopt or adapt their behaviors, their characteristics. If you are around a negative person, you will tend to be negative, and you all know that. 
If you're around a positive person, you will, you will tend to be more positive, especially when you're surrounded by a group of people that are all positive or a group of people that are all negative. So following somebody is not necessarily a bad thing, but we have to be careful. 1 Corinthians 15, it says, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt the good manners. We have to be careful of the people we hang around. How many times have you heard somebody say that you have to be careful of the friends you choose? Be careful of the friends you choose. Why is that? Because they will have an impact on you. If you surround yourself by evil, corrupt people, you will become evil and corrupt. We have to be careful of that. We have to be careful of our family. Now, you can't really choose your family, but you can choose whether or not you're going to hang around your family. If your family is uh, always evil and they're always speaking evil things and they're a negative and pessimistic, I mean, how many of you want to be around an evil, negative, pessimistic, hateful brawler? I mean, that just is nothing good in that at all. I want to be around a positive person, a positive, optimistic lover of good things. That's what I want to be around. I want to be around somebody like that. I want to have good influence. I want to follow the people who, who have a, will make a good impact on my life. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, Paul talking to Timothy, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lewis and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it that in thee also, saying this, that your mother was a positive influence. Her mother was a positive influence. There's unfeigned faith. There's good, uh, there is a good testimony in your mother and in your grandmother. Though these are the people you want to get around. The chances of turning out, living a holy life, being a positive person for God, being a, a positive influence for God are, are much greater when you're hanging around better people. So you have to be careful of the people you hang around. So following is, is, is an internal desire. It already resides in us. But just because it resides in us doesn't mean we don't need to cultivate it, right? Number two, point two, following is an intentional discipline. While following is an internal desire, it also is an intentional discipline. Let me give you a few things here. First of all, Paul said to follow good examples. Paul said to follow good examples in Philippians. Open your Bible to Philippians 3, look at verses 17 to 21, and we'll see Paul said to follow some good examples. He says, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Mark them. Draw your attention to those people who are living a godly life and have a, have a good testimony, who are a good example. Follow after those people. And he kind of puts in parenthesis here in 18 to, uh, through 19. It says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. There are plenty of those people out there who are the enemies of the cross of Christ. He says in verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Be careful of those people. Stay away from those people who are the wrong influence. But he says, but brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have, for, have us for an example. Be followers of good examples. We all have somebody in our life that we can say, now, they're a good example. They're a good example. Now, you, we, have been, we have been told for so long, oh, you just need to be your own person. You don't have to follow anybody. Just, just be your own man. We've heard that, right? But can I tell you something? That that's not exactly what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us just to, just to be anybody. He says he wants us to be conformed to the image of his son. I say, well, all Christians are all, they're all the same. Well, they should all look a little bit the same. I mean, in terms of their character, in terms of their conduct. I mean, yeah, they've got a, a, a different outwardly figure, but inwardly, we should resemble that of our Lord. We should all look like our Lord. We should all be gracious. We should all be giving. We should all be kind. 
We should all be loving. Now, who wouldn't want to look like that anyway? I mean, that's like a wonderful state of utopia, isn't it? Just to have all of those good characteristics, all of the good conduct in your life. Be like those people. Find those people in your life, or maybe they're not in your life, but maybe you don't have to idolize them and, and put them up on a pedestal, so to speak. But you look out there and you say, now, now that guy right there has got some, some good character about him. Or this gal right here, she's got some good conduct about her. That there is a loving wife. That's a person who I would like to be like. Not me personally, but maybe my wife might suggest that. You know what I mean? I might say, well, there's a good-looking man who, who really loves his family, who really takes things on and who is serious about spiritual things. And you can say, I'd like to be like that. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, we're encouraged to do that. Not to put them up on a pedestal, but look at that pedestal and say, what can I learn from this? What can I apply to my life that I can grow from what I see in theirs? So this is not just spiritual things. This is also, this is also temporal things. Because the, things from, the, the, the temporal things also have a spiritual significance, you understand. Let me give you an example. You see an individual out there, and you say, what can I learn from a, a, what can I learn from a, a businessman? And you say, well, they're, they're, they're in the world, and, 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 and they're, they're not in the church. They're not even saved. I, I get that. Maybe, maybe this businessman that you look up to isn't saved. Maybe they're not in the church. But maybe, they, maybe, they, maybe they're a good testimony. You can learn from this. And you can say, hey, now that's a good testimony right there. There, there are things in their life that I can adopt and make part of mine. I've, I've used this illustration before, but when I was in college, I, I played foosball. I don't know how many like to play foosball. I, I love to play foosball. I was always really fast. I was really good. I mean, it was the only thing I was good at. I, didn't, I wasn't good in school, but I could whip anybody on the foosball table, just about. I was just really fast, you know? You don't have to be good. You just have to be fast. And, and I would stand back, and I would watch all these foosball players, and I would see a guy play the back, and I'd see a guy play the front, and I'd see the way the guy handles the ball and how this guy plays defense, and, and then they would change, and I, I would sit back and I'd watch this table. And you know what I would do? I would say, I like the way he does that. Now that right there, now that's good. I like the way he positions himself to see differently. He's not over the table. He doesn't have a ready stance. I like his stance. I like, his, I like his, how prepared he is. I like the way he can roll that ball with his guy, drag it back and slam it. I just love that. I'd, I'd, I'd watch his. I'd, like, I'd take a little bit of this guy, take a little bit of that guy, take a little bit of this guy, and you know what? I made my own guy. And now, now somebody might be over here saying, I like the way Joe, yeah, probably doesn't say that, but maybe there's some quality about Joe and his foosball. That I, I kind of like the way he does that. And so he's going to look at me, and then he's going to look at this guy, and he's going to look over here at this guy, and then he's going to kind of develop his own technique. You see what I'm saying? We can look out at the world, at the secular world, and learn character from them because it's godly character. They might not be godly, but their character is godly. There's a lot of generous people out there in the world who are very, very generous that are not saved. And we can look on them and say, I'd like to be generous like that. I want to be like the guy, but I want to be generous like that. We can learn things from people. So Paul said to follow good examples. Paul wanted others to follow the good example of Timothy. Listen to this in 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Uh, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer. Be an example of the believer. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. When you go out there, friends... Church, when you go out there and somebody is looking at us, when somebody is looking at me, I want them to say, man, now that right there is an example of a Christian. That is a good example of a believer. But be thou an example. Of, look at what he says. This is really good. Be thou an example of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, all of these things. Be thou an example of the believers. Let other people maybe look at your behavior and say, now that is behavior that becometh a saint. 
That is good conduct. That is good conduct built from a good character. They know Christ. Timothy's mother, of course, was one to be followed. She had a a good reputation. Her mother had a good reputation. You know what? I hope I have a good reputation for my children. Now, I'm not the best father in the world. The best father in the world, can I just say this, is God. God the Father. He's the best father in the world. Everybody else underneath that, you and I included, are all substandard. So I, I, it's hard for me to measure up as a, as a father figure to, to, to God. It's like, how, how does that even count? It doesn't even count, right? But I hope that my kids will look at me and say, but maybe they'll look at other people and say, I don't know. Maybe they'll say, you know what? There are some good things that I learned from my dad. There are some, there are some things that I don't want to repeat. People say, I hope, my ki- I, I hope your kids grow up to be just like you. Some, some dads are pious enough to say, I hope my kids grow up to be just like me. Can I tell you what? I don't want my kids to grow up to be like me. I want my kids to grow up to be like the person I aspire to become. My aspiration is to become like Jesus Christ. That's who I want my kids to model after. Not me, necessarily, but I want them to model after Jesus Christ. I want them to improve on the good things, and I want them to reject all of the bad things. That's what I want for my children. But Paul did want others to follow the good example of Timothy. Paul wanted others to follow him. In 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, be followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Now, if you have good qualities, if you have good character, good conduct in your life, if you are, if you are Christ-like, th- then there's no shame in having people follow after you. Because in a sense, what's happening is they're not necessarily following you, they're following Christ, you see. When we look at the Old and the New Testament and we see all of these these spiritual giants of the faith, we can say, what can I learn from them? I want to follow their conduct. I want to follow their character. I want to learn from the good things they did, and I want to learn from the bad things they did. I want to, uh, I want to adopt the good things. I want to reject all of the wrong things, and I want to be a better person. I want to be more Christ-like. Paul wanted others to follow him. Paul wanted others to follow God. In Ephesians 5, 1, be therefore followers of God as dear children. Be followers of God as dear children. Now, that's an interesting, an interesting verse. Follow God as dear children. Now, we know what it's like for a child to follow their dad, right? I mean, maybe, maybe it was like this in your home, and, and, and maybe it wasn't. And all kids are a little different, let's face it. But for the most part, but for the most part, children will follow their parent, their dad around. They'll want to be with their dad. And they'll just kind of follow him around. The dad will go over here, and the, the child will then, will then follow the, the dad. And, and, uh, and when I read this in Ephesians 5, 1, be therefore followers of God as your children, follow God as if you are a child of God because you are. Now, isn't that neat? that we are a child of God, that we are born again, that we are a new creature in Jesus Christ. We are his children. And you know what? Be followers of God that way. That he's our heavenly father. You know how neat that is to be able to follow God that way? Let me say this as well. God wanted others to follow him. This is kind of the capstone. God wanted others to follow him. Matthew 4, 19, and he saith unto them, what did he say unto them? Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That is the capstone. God wanted his disciples to follow after himself. Now, we can learn a lot from the Bible. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That's what the Bible says. See, the goal this year, when we look at our growth, growth 2020, is to follow those remarkable individuals in the Bible. Learn from their behavior. What can we learn from their their uprisings and their downfalls? 
What can we learn from them? How can we be better Christians? I think if I was to ask openly how many of you want to be a better Christian, at least for the sake of embarrassment, everybody would raise their hand and say, oh, I want to be a better Christian. I said, how many of you want to be a better father? All the fathers would raise their hand. Mothers would raise their hand. How many of you want to be a better businessman? How, I don't know anybody that would say, I want to be a lousy businessman. I want to be a worse father. I want to be, I want to be a worse child. I just want to be a worse Christian. I mean, nobody would say that because we all aspire to be on some level better. So the goal here is to look at all of these things in the Bible, all of these, these, uh, these individuals, these quote-unquote giants. And let me say this, too, about the giants. They weren't filled with a different portion, necessarily, of the Holy Spirit than you have today. You are filled with the same Holy Spirit. The same power that came on the disciples at Pentecost resides in us. We have the Holy Spirit living in us, indwelling us. We can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth us. It doesn't get any more powerful than that. You say, well, I, I don't know if I can be a better father. Well, you can if you... If you're saved and if you're, and if you're submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit, I don't know if I can be a better businessman. Well, you can be a better businessman if you're saved and you're submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit. We can be better Christians. We can be a better, a better church for Jesus Christ because we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us, empowering us to live a better life. This year when we talk about growth, I don't want anything to come in our way. I don't, want, uh, I don't want a coronavirus. I don't want a recession. I don't want a depression. You hear about the economy. Well, it's a, it's a V-shaped uh, recovery. It could be, a, it, it could be a, a W-shaped recovery. I've heard of the hockey stick-shaped recovery. Well, who knew? I don't know. Who cares, right? I mean, the bottom line is, are we winning people to Jesus Christ? Are we growing spiritually, right? Are we going to be able to recover from this? Yes, we are. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit living in us, strengthening us, guiding us, helping us to be better Christians for Jesus Christ. There already is an internal desire to follow, but it needs to be an intentional discipline. Let's find the things in our lives. Let's find the ones in our lives that we can look up to and we can say, now that is who I want to become. My wife has, has said for years, there's, there's a, a lady in, uh, in St. Cloud, Minnesota, her name is Sue Kakuza. She says, I, when I grow up, I want to be like Sue Kakuza. She's a, a pastor's wife up there. She says, I, I, I want to be like Sue. I mean, there, there, there's other people throughout the years. My wife says, I want to be like that lady when I, when I get older. We should all be doing that. That's the guy I want to be like. That's the girl I want to be like. That's the dad I want to be like. That's the child I want to be like. We should be able to do that. On some level, growth requires an example to follow after. So what example are we going to follow? Are we going to follow the world's example? Are we going to follow ungodliness? Or are we going, to, we going to go right to the Bible and we're going to say, man, these people, Abraham and Joseph, we talked about Abraham, we talked about Joseph a little bit. We're going to talk about Joseph next week. We talked about Adam and Eve. I mean, there's hardly anything good to learn about them, right? No, I mean, you can always learn from them. We, talk, we talked about uh, a Cain and Abel, and we said, well, how can you learn anything from Cain and Abel? We can learn from them because God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So it's in the Bible. We have to excavate that truth, apply it to our lives. We can be better Christians for Christ. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I look around the room, I think everybody here is saved. But you know how long it's been since I've given the gospel? Like through, I, I, through Zoom, I mean, how do you do that, you know? looking at a screen, looking at all these people and saying, are you saved, are you saved? I don't know. Are you saved, though? That's the question. Are you going to heaven when you die? I want this hand right here to represent you and me, and I want this wallet to represent all the wicked, evil, sinful things we've done. God says he loves us but hates our wicked, evil sin. This is what keeps us separated from God. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
and that the wages of sin is death. Someone has to die for the sin. And I thank God that 2,000 years ago, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. And the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, but it is a gift of God, not of works. We're saved because we place our faith in Jesus Christ alone as our Savior, not because we trust in ourselves as our Savior. You know, one of the hardest things to do during the coronavirus is to give out a heaven track because people reject them. They, they, get, they get real skittish of it. You, you try to give them a heaven track. You say, hey, I just want to give this to you, and they're just like, whoa, whoa. I tried that a couple times, and for weeks, I didn't give any out. People are, I, I don't want that. I don't want that. And it's like, oh, well, okay, well, just get a little, sanitize it and wipe it down. And can I just read it to you then, if that's okay? I've never, I never offered that. Shame on me. I should have said, that's okay. You just stand right there in line. Who wants to hear this? I want to give the gospel. <laughs> It'd be pretty powerful, probably, you know. Uh, you might not want to touch this track, but you do want to uh, touch the streets of gold. So let's talk about heaven, right? Uh, here we are with our, with our sin. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for that sin so that you and I can go to heaven. Aren't you so thankful salvation's easy? It's easy for us because we just trust Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we need to take that to the world, right? Especially now. We, uh, we take, when we say a, whole, a dying world, it takes it to a whole other level, right? Because people are dying of the coronavirus. So we've got to be careful of that. But let me tell you what. The world needs Jesus Christ. And so do you. 